Hi, my name's Henry. I'm a radiology registrar uh, working at SA Medical Imaging. Uh, and this is our uh, next in the series of lectures, uh, series of MSK lectures, um, focusing on the foot and ankle. Uh, thanks again to my colleagues Christopher Ovenden and Meredith Thomas for preparing these lecture slides. Looking at the learning outcomes uh, associated with the lecture, the um, plan is to explain the utility of some of the imaging modalities in MSK imaging, particularly of the foot and ankle, uh, and to talk particularly about um, some common fractures in the ankle and foot, uh, some, um, uh, some foot dislocations, uh, particularly Taylor dislocation and Liz Frank injuries and fracture dislocations of the ankle. Just to briefly touch on the normal foot and ankle anatomy again, we've got the talus and the calcaneus with the sub talar joint between them, we've got the navicular the cuboid and the uh, the lateral, middle, and medial cuneiform bones, five metatarsals, uh, proximal, middle, and distal phalanges. And on lateral, we can see the same. We've got the tibia and fibula, the talus, subtalar joint, calcaneus, um, partially seeing the talar dome, navicular cuboid, cuneiforms, metatarsals, and phalanges. Primary modalities of imaging using, uh, used in the uh, ankle and foot, uh, planar radiographs uh, mostly, ultrasound for ligaments, soft tissues, and for joint effusions. Um, CT has great bony detail for, uh, especially for occult fractures, and MRI fantastic bone and soft tissue detail. Um, particularly looking at ligamentous injuries, syndesmotic injuries, osteocondyl injuries, uh, and um, uh, bone marrow edema or bone bruising. The standard uh, ankle views are a front floor and AP, a mortise, which is internal rotation of about 15 to 20 degrees, which gets a lovely view of the Taylor dome in profile, and lateral. So there are particular joint spaces that we can look at on frontal projection. Um, so the medial clear space, which is the uh, distance from the from the medial border of the talus to the lateral border of the medial malleolus, usually less than three millimeters or less than or equal to three millimeters, and the tibiofibula uh, tibiofibular space, um, which is between the the tibia and the fibula, usually less than six cent, uh, six millimeters. On more taste view, uh, we can look at a talocrural angle, which is the angle between a line drawn on the articular surface of the distal tibia and a line connecting the tips of the malleoli, uh, which should uh, usually be between um, or around 83 degrees. We can also assess the medial and lateral clear spaces. And the Taylor tilt, which is the difference between the medial and the lateral clear spaces. The medial clear space is the distance between the lateral border of the medial malleolus and the medial border of the talus, as we've mentioned. And the uh, and the distance between the surfaces around the uh, tibia talar and tibia fibula joints should be equal. So um, uh, we've briefly touched on these, but tibiofibular clear space is, this, uh, is the space seen between the tibia and fibula. Tibiofibular overlap is the space of overlapping, the amount of overlapping tibia and fibula on, uh, on AP. And the lateral talar shift um, is when there is a medial clear space that's greater than about four millimetres. Um, here we can see that there's a, a, an increased medial clear space and a decreased lateral clear space um, in association with this distal fibular fracture. Tibiofibular clear spaces we talked about, usually less than five millimeters on, on, AP, uh, on AP view and it's measured about a centimeter above the, um, above the distal tibial articular surface. And tibiofibular overlap, um, again, usually greater than a centimetre on AP 
uh, on AP projection um, measured in, in the same spot. So lateral plane films, um, we see that the malleoli are superimposed on the uh, on the uh, talar dome, the subtalar joint visible. You can see the margins of most of the um, most of the tarsal bones and the uh, proximal um, proximal metatarsal bones. You can also look for joint effusions. So we can see at least moderate volume joint effusions on plane films um, as a sort of outward bulging of soft tissue density around the around the um, around the ankle joint, uh, and in um, as with other joints in the body, if there's a large ankle joint effusion in the setting of trauma, you'd be suspicious. Uh, you'd be suspicious of a fracture. Ankle fractures account for approximately ten percent of uh, of fractures. Um, there are several classification systems, uh, but some common types of fractures include medial and lateral malleolar fractures, um, and things like pylon and talon neck fractures as well. The most common fracture around the ankle is a lateral malleolar fracture, um, and is classified with a Weber classification. Weber A classification is below the ankle joint with an intact syndesmosis. Weber B is at the level of the ankle joint. And level C is above the level of the ankle joint and may also be associated with um, medial malleolar fracture or deltoid ligament injury. A Mason nerve fracture is a, uh, occurs in the setting of traumatic external rotation and describes a spiral proximal fibular fracture with an associated ankle joint injury. So we can see here spiral fracture of the proximal fibula, but also we can see that there's uh, increased uh, increased clear space, loss of the normal overlap, increased medial clear space as well. So the suggestion that there's disruption of the tibiofibular syndesmosis as well. A pylon fracture uh, is a distal tibial fracture involving the tibial plafond and tibial articular surface, usually as a axial loading injury, and it may have associated Taylor or calcaneal fractures. There are many classification systems, um, uh, but this one is frequently adopted. Um, type one is an inter or is an articular fracture with minimal displacement. Type two, displacement of the articular surface but without significant comminution. Type three, where there's marked comminution uh, and impaction. Taylor neck fractures are one of the more common types of tailless fracture, however, are uh, relatively uncommon overall. Um, it's a fracture through the thinnest cross-sectional portion of the talus, just proximal to the tailor head. These usually result from forced hyperdorsiflexion of the ankle with axial loading. There is also a relatively high incidence of other associated injuries. The Hawkins classification separates these into three types, type 1 being undisplaced, type 2 being displaced with subluxation or dislocation of the subtalar joint in the normal ankle joint, and type 3 displaced with the body of the talus dislocated from both the subtalar and ankle joints. There is a risk of avascular necrosis which increases with the increasing classification types with type 1 fractures having 0 to 15 percent risk, type 2 20 to 50 percent, type 3 approaching 100 percent risk. There is also the risk of post-traumatic arthritis and, uh, and malunion. Conversely, calcaneal fractures are the most common type of tarsal fracture, accounting for up to 60 percent of all tarsal fractures. They can be described or broadly classified into two types depending on whether there is articular involvement of the subtalar joint. Extra articular accounts for approximately 30% of fractures and intra-articular intra -articular approximately 70%. The calcaneus is also a common site of stress fracture, usually in the posterior superior aspect. Calcaneal fractures are usually best seen on calcaneal series. 
um, although not uh, that they can be overlooked on a lateral radiograph if the um, presentation doesn't usually it doesn't uh, request specific calcaneal views. The bowler angle, uh, also called the calcaneal angle, is used in the assessment of calcaneal fractures and is the angle on a lateral radiograph joining uh, between a line joining the highest point of the anterior process of the calcaneus and the highest point of the posterior articular facet and a line joining the highest point of the posterior articular facet with the highest point of the calcaneal tuberosity. There's variation in between individuals as per normal values, but they're usually taken as between 25 and 40 degrees. And there is relatively little variation between both feet of an individual. The degree of reduction in the pole angle is an indicator of the severity of the calcaneal injury uh, and the degree of um, of how much the angle is restored is correlated with functional outcome. There are many dislocations of the um, of the ankle joint, uh, as there are many articulations of the ankle joint. So on the left, we've got a tibiotalar dislocation, where there's posterior dislocation of the talar dome from the tibia, and on the right, a subtalar dislocation with an associated fracture, where there's um, dislocation of the subtalar joint. On the left we have a total talar dislocation where there's disruption of both the uh, tibiotalar joint, talar navicular joint and the subtalar joint with the talus sitting out here and a talar navicular uh, dislocation on the right where the talar navicular joint is disrupted. As we've touched on before Fractures around the ankle are commonly associated with um, with dislocations, uh, and vice versa. Um, instead of discussing all of the fractures that occur around the foot, um, we'll just take a look at some of the more common fractures and more commonly missed fractures and malalignments in the foot. So a commonly overlooked fracture is that of the fifth metatarsal base, and there are a few fractures that occur here. Um, we can have a uh, avulsion fracture of the fifth metatarsal tuberosity um, at the insertion of the peroneus brevis, uh, and this is usually in, uh, as a result of a forcible inverse inversion injury whilst the foot's in plantar flexion. Um, the fracture fragment is oriented transversely, as uh, which helps distinguish it from an apophysis, which is usually obliquely oriented. A Jones fracture is a fracture of the base of the fifth metatarsal, uh, 1.5 to 3 centimetres from the base, uh, and is a, it is as the result of adduction while the foot is in plantar flexion and is prone to non-union. And then we can also get stress fractures associated with the fifth metatarsal as well. So these are plain films uh, describing what we've just talked about or showing what we've just talked about. And um, this is the obliquely oriented apophysis as compared to a transversely oriented avulsion fracture. Jones fracture, again, slightly further distally on the, uh, on the um, fifth metatarsal and a stress fracture distally further. <laughs> Lateral tailor process fractures occur when the foot is dorsiflexed and inverted, as can happen with snowboarding, hence the name snowboarder's fracture, uh, and should be suspected when there is soft tissue swelling inferior to the lateral malleolus. Um, they can mimic a lateral ankle sprain and are commonly overlooked on uh, on radiographs and sometimes CT can be necessary to identify the fracture line. These can occur as isolated fractures or can occur as part of a more complex angle fracture. Anterior calcaneal process fractures are one of the more common misfractures of the calcaneus with up to 90% not reported on radiographs um, which can lead to non-union and unrecognized ligamentous injuries or associated ligamentous injuries. These are a relatively rare occurrence, counting for only 3% of calcaneal fractures 
uh, and are generally not isolated but occur in the following uh, in association with lateral ankle ligament injury and mid tarsal sprain. These are best seen on oblique views and may not be seen on uh, AP or lateral views. The more commonly recognised mechanism is an injury by flexion, inversion and distraction leading to an avulsion fracture uh, of the anterior calcaneal process. Talodome fractures or osteochondral lesions of the talus, uh, the talar dome, are focal injuries to the talar dome which can either be traumatic or uh, as a result of repetitive microtrauma. They have a variable involvement of subchondral bone and cartilage. Diagnosis can be made with plain films, though MR is helpful in determining the size of the um, size of the lesion and the extent of associated edema. They can be of the medial or lateral Taylor dome, with the medial Taylor dome usually having um, uh, no history of trauma and more posteriorly. The lateral Taylor dome usually having a traumatic history, usually more superficial and smaller. With traumatic lesions, these are usually as the result of ankle inversion and dorsiflexion. Um, and in repetitive microtrauma, uh, the theory is this creates an ischemic environment which causes loss of integrity of the subchondral bone, which can lead to softening and disruption of the overlying cartilage. The Liz Frank joint articulates the tarsal bones with the metatarsal bases. Um, where the first three metatarsals articulate with the three cuneiforms and the fourth and fifth articulate with the cuboid. The Liz Frank ligament attaches the medial cuneiform to the second metatarsal base through three bands, um, them being the dorsal ligament, interosseous ligament and plantar ligament. The ligaments help uh, in wedging the base of the second metatarsal um, between the medial and lateral cuneiforms, locking the tarsal metatarsal joint and acting as a uh, transverse stabiliser in the foot. Um, it's particularly vulnerable, however, due to uh, the absence of transverse ligaments stabilising the first and second metatarsals. Um, it can be associated with uh, many or varied injury mechanisms, including direct, direct crush injury, forefoot abduction injuries and forced plantar flexion. May also um, occur in, or a dislocation may also occur in diabetic neuropathic joints like Charcot's joint. There are several subtypes of Liz Frank injury. Homolateral injuries can involve displacement of the first to fifth metatarsals or of the second to fifth metatarsals while the first um, NTPJ is congruent. Um, divergent injuries uh, are lateral dislocation of the second fifth metatarsals with medial dislocation of the first metatarsal um, or can have isolated patterns where one or two metatarsals that dislocate dorsally in isolation. Key finding on plane films is malalignment of the second metatarsal at uh, second tarsal metatarsal joint um, is, such as displacement of the second metatarsal base on frontal view or a step off sign on lateral view um, with additional abnormalities involving a diastasis of greater than two millimetres between the second and first metatarsal bases. MRI is especially useful for assessing ligamentous injury, um, particularly when there's a high clinical concern while, when radiographs are inconclusive. Most common complications are non-union and post-traumatic arth uh, arthritis. Treatment may be non-operative or operative, um, with the indication for operative management being unstable injury. That brings us to the end of uh, our talk on the foot and ankle. Thank you.